Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So if any of you watched my last video, you know that our cat, Mittens, um, she had her kittens somewhere around our property, not on our property, but in the vicinity of our neighborhood. And we actually um, saw her bringing them home. So I wanted to give you guys a update on uh, her kittens. She's actually out right now. We let her out of the kennel, um, but we saw her walking down our driveway with a kitten in her mouth and uh, being the mama that she is, she went back and got all four of them um, that night. And then the next morning she went and got her last one. She hasn't brought in any more back. Um, she keeps going over to that area where she had them hiding out. Um, I think maybe she may have lost one or she's trying to find it, uh, but she hasn't brought it home. But I wanted to show you guys really quick just how adorable these little, these little guys are. Aren't they just so cute? They're about six weeks old, um, maybe five weeks old, right about the time that you want to wean them from their mom's milk. Um, and I have a few friends that are interested in some kittens, so we'll probably give uh, some of them away and then keep some of them here for our barn cat, um, as barn cats for outside, uh, so they can keep the... Um, just pests down and uh, do the job that they're meant to do. So, um, so we're really, really excited about this new addition to our little homestead. This morning, I am going to actually go out front and look at my plants that I planted out there. I planted a bunch of squash, uh, different varieties just um, multiple things out there and I want to go and check on them because I was noticing a lot of bug damage the other day so I went out and I sprayed it with neem oil which is natural um, not really an herbicide or you know it's it, it, it is to treat the pests without really harming the the fruit of your plant. So um, I'm going to show you guys. So I came out here and this is what was happening to my plants. Um, they were starting to do this and there was on the stem of some of my plants was a little beetle and you would notice like foam coming out of the stem of the plant. It's a beetle that, a Japanese beetle, I think it's called. I'm not quite sure of the technical term for it. All I know is it was a beetle and it was coming and it was destroying my plants that I had just put in, which can be very, very, very discouraging considering that you put, invest all this time into doing your seeds incubating them for weeks and weeks and weeks until you can get them in the ground only to have a bug come and destroy them within days um, is very disheartening. So I sprayed them with neem oil last night. Typically you don't want to spray neem oil when it's blistering hot. It'll fry your plant. You'll lose your plant because it is an oil um, and it will just, it's not good for your plants. So I came out here after the sun was about to set um, around dusk and I sprayed them uh, tops and bottoms of the leaves and hopefully it'll take, it'll do its job. If I continue to see any um, bug damage, I will treat it again. You can do it every seven days um, until the bug damage is at a minimal and then you want to continue your um, routine every 14 days uh, through your growing season um, as well as I came out here and I fertilized it with some fish emulsion I use fish fertilizer by Alaska 
it's the best. I love it. Um, it stinks really bad, but it does the job. Um, but everything's looking pretty good. Now, Ant. But no, I don't see any beetles on these. So I'm going to come out here and I'm going to water the plants. And then I'll take you guys in the back of the property and show you everything I got planted out there. I got all my tomatoes planted, um, peppers, eggplants, everything has been planted back there. Um, so I'm really excited to take you guys back there and show you what I've done. Uh, today's supposed to be a high of 81, um, a little bit warmer than yesterday. Uh, it's definitely starting to heat up. Um, and the plants love it when it's hot. The soil typically, the, the plants will be in dormant until your soil starts to increase to about 50 to 60 degrees. Um, and then uh, your plants will start to thrive because they really need the warm soil. They need the warm sun. Um, and typically your plants will um, start to really grow once the, the 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 temperatures heat up so we're really excited although it can be very very hot yesterday it was hot <laughs> um especially that we just had a frost date a week ago uh so or two weeks ago so uh my body's still getting used to the warmer warmer uh temperatures so so beautiful out here today the farm stand is open got that opened um and just coming out here like i always do every morning just surveying the garden. Uh, I need to come in here and replenish all of my all of my stuff. My friends' soaps and sugar scrubs and bath soaps. Um, I'm gonna go get some fresh eggs uh, from the chickens this morning. And this is kale. That one's done. But I'm going to go and cut all fresh vegetables uh, to put out here for the farm stand. So what, what I'm doing right now is I'm in the back of the garden um, and I am getting produce for the farm stand. But I'm also checking my Swiss chard for any kind of bug damage like leaf miners. Um, you want to cut out those leaves as soon as you see any damage because what can happen infestation <laughs> let's see if i can say this right um in your whole crop so you want to come out here and you want to come into your garden and you want to assess for any um bug damage and get rid of those leaves as soon as possible i just throw them to my chickens they're happy they love it um don't compost it because it will then infest your soil um, that you will soon use in your garden and then you'll have just a really big problem. So um, I would just throw it away if you don't have any means of comp of uh, getting like giving it to your chickens or anything like that. I would just find a way to get rid of it. Um, and yeah, this all looks good. But when I talk about leaf miners, let me show you guys really fast what I am talking about. So you see this, these white dots right here? That is larva from the white flies that land on your plants. Typically if your plant is super healthy, you won't have a lot of bug damage. Um, my plants are very healthy, but the Swiss chard is starting to bolt, so that means that the season for this is coming to an end. I already um, had so I have sown some more uh, seedlings um, over here in the uh, left part of my bed um, that will grow through the summer. Uh, but this all needs to be harvested, um, and it's starting to come to a close. Um, but a Swiss chard does really good; it, it grows here for a really long time. 
Um, and so I'm really thankful for that because it's one of my favorite vegetables. Um, but that's what I'm doing out here in the garden as well as getting produce for the farm stand. Um, just a really quick video, nothing extravagant or, or amazing. Uh, just everyday life here on our little farm. But before I let you go, I wanted to show you the tomato bed that we uh, did yesterday um, and just show you the layout that we decided to go with uh, because I had probably close to 200 different varieties of tomatoes that I needed to plant and I needed to make sure that they were going to be in a really sunny spot and that they were going to get really good soil. Um, so we decided to put this deer fencing up with T post. It's a seven foot uh, fencing, so it's very high, so the tomatoes can climb. But I have tomatoes planted all along the perimeter and then all along the back of the fence. Um, the back of the fence. I did not want fencing here or here because this walkway is so narrow and it's very hard to walk in here if this is blocked off i wanted it to be really open so i just used these posts that you can get at any contract uh, uh contractor supply or, or tractor supply sorry excuse me tractor supply you can get these at or um any hardware local hardware store near you you can buy these at um they're about two dollars um so it's kind of a, I mean, or you could just make your own sticks, but um, it's kind of just an easy way to maximize your space as well as keeping it open so that you can access, access your garden. Um, so that's really what's going on. We also planted, I planted tomatoes all along this back perimeter. And then this right here is all open. So I have, these are um, beets. And those are, that's spinach, potatoes, my Walla Walla onions from last year that will be coming out. And once these are out of here, we're really going to focus on back here, this area. This bed, everything is super green and lush and you can tell that it's getting the proper nutrients and the proper balance that it needs. But in my beds over there, everything is green but it's yellowish and so that means that there is a nitrogen problem and it needs to be fertilized so i've been using the fish emulsion that i mentioned earlier in this video um to amend that soil but i really need to get some of this this manure over there to um, lay on top of the wood chips saturate it around my plants and water it and add more wood chips on top of that so it can really just nourish the soil um, so that's what's really going on here at the farm I pray that you guys are having an amazing day wherever you're at enjoy the sunshine the Lord bless you till next time